Hello, my name is Riley. Welcome to my off-grid camper. And today I'll be reviewing the Set Power compressor fridge. This is a build I've been working on for a couple months now and everything is just starting to come together. I chose this fridge because it matched the exact dimensions for what I needed for my particular build here. I had to shave away my cabinetry just to get this to fit. It is a real tight fit. Um, as much as I would have loved to get the uh, combo fridge freezer because Set Power has a whole range of fridge freezers to choose from, I went with this one because it was uh, just about the humble size that I needed to fit into my space here. Anything bigger would have been a lot more difficult. Anything smaller would have been a little bit too small. So this is my Goldilocks zone for this build here. First impressions of this fridge are pretty nice. I like the sleek design. I like the flush mounted inset handles, quite nice. I like how this is a nice smooth cutaway here. So you just sort of put your finger underneath and makes it nice and easy. The lid itself is nice and lightweight. It has a bit of a foam seal on there. I assume that works pretty well to keep all the cold in. The hinges are of okay quality. They're a little bit sloppy, but that's okay. I think most coolers are honestly like that. I like how it's got a little bit of a chain here just so that the lid doesn't fall back and do a 180. That also saves the hinges from over lever leveraging and breaking off. We also have a table for uh, temperature reference. Inside, you can see I have it crammed with food. I use this as a fridge, but it can also be used as a freezer. This being a compressor fridge, it makes it very versatile with a wide range of temperatures from five degrees till minus 18, which is awesome. I like how every product also just fits in here, like my milk right above the lid. And I have the carton of eggs at the bottom there, which is perfect. A little bit of a plastic wrap salad and uh, you know, some beef and stuff like that. A few pros of using a small space is that you cycle through food a lot quicker. So nothing really goes to waste. And another pro is that um, I find with a lot of taller fridges that load from the top, you tend to get a lot of produce and stuff that goes to the bottom and then you stuff more stuff on top and then you sort of forget about it, it goes rotten and it gets kind of beaten, battered and compressed. So you have to really be careful to put things in containers. This one, you don't really have to do that just because it's like two layers of food. It makes everything really easy and accessible. So condensation is also a big issue with uh, fridges. There's nothing really, I don't think you can do about it, but um, this one here starts to kind of get a little bit of a pool at the bottom and everything kind of sits in that pool. Thank God I have this uh, cardboard egg carton here to uh, soak up all that water. I do like how sleek and easy it is to clean here. Not very many seams, so not much dirt build up anywhere. I like the flush mounted digital temperature display. It's pretty intuitive. Um, it's just as simple as changing the temperature by plus or minus. And then if you wanna change the modes from eco to save energy and sip those, and sip those watts, um, it's just click of a button. Um, however, though, I did have to read the manual for changing it between Celsius and Fahrenheit. That wasn't quite as simple. I had to turn it off. One, two, three. Hit the gear. Compressor, and then you can hit the gear again for Fahrenheit or Celsius. And then just leave it to reset. Done deal. This fridge on the spec says it's rated for 45 watts, but because this is a compressor, it charges up the system and the compressor only has to run for like a minute and then it shuts off uh, when it does its cycles and then the whole system's charged. And somehow, I don't really know how a fridge works, but magically it just keeps the box cold and then it sort of keeps an even spread of power or even spread of coolness and that's why these fridges are known to be really, really efficient, way better than uh, most other electric fridges. I'm gonna open it up, trying to trick the thermostat a little bit here so I can hear the uh, compressor run. This thing is pretty quiet. I can sleep at night like a baby and it does not wake me up, especially when it is uh, pushed in like that and hidden away in the cabinetry. I can't even like hear it operate at all. I picked up this thermostat from the grocery store. It's been about five minutes. I have it set for the minus 18. 
uh, and it's been about five minutes now. We went from 15 degrees to nine degrees. So this is cooling off pretty quickly. It's been about 10 minutes and now we are at minus one. Okay, so this thing is kind of uh, slowing down a bit. It cooled down to minus zero to minus five, like pretty quick. But now it's been at uh, minus six degrees, seven degrees uh, for a bit. So as it's really approaching that uh, lower temperature, it takes so much more energy to keep it at those cool levels. And the compressor has been just going at it full time, no cycling. So it's really trying to get down to those uh, lower temperatures. Okay, so we're pretty capped out at minus 10, minus nine degrees. It's reading 12 on there. Honestly, that's pretty cold. I didn't expect it to get minus I didn't expect it to get to minus 18 because I think the, uh, again, this is for reference, it's not really advertising. Um, so I was just sort of assuming that's what this unit does. Oh, it is really cold in there right now. So that's nice. Okay, there's already ice forming on the inside. So that just goes to show 100% below zero. Look at that. Nicely done. Definitely store my ice cream in here. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the lid and then I'm going to put the uh, thermostat back on. I set everything for uh, back to five degrees and then I'm going to time it for another five minutes and see how long the actual cooler retains its coolness. Okay, so everything is pretty much settled here. It is now uh, at minus one degree, so that's good. The overall uh, system kind of withheld. A lot of the coolness open up the top obviously a lot of that escaped filled full of hot air so it took a bit for it to settle down now i'm going to see if it can hold that average for uh, the time being i might just leave it for half an hour and see where it's at okay so it's been about half an hour it's settled down at minus three degrees so i'm actually really impressed the insulation definitely retains a good amount of coolness keeping that heat out it's 25 or 23 degrees out right now so that's a good 20 degree difference right there you have this cord right here plugs in nice and easy gives it uh feeds it 12 volts we also have a 15 amp fuse just in case it um blows out on the inside for any reason nice snug fit i like it and then on the other end here we have this cigarette lighter this unit also comes with a AC adapter, so you can plug into 120. And then a flexible cord with the uh, female end of the cigarette lighter. Nice and simple. My overall conclusion of this is that this is a pretty awesome little fridge. Um, I recommend it to anyone building anything off grid or on a 12 volt system. This is the uh, this is the way to go. Set Power has many different fridge and freezer combos to choose from. Um, so I highly recommend going to check them out. This unit is also very applicable to other off grid lifestyles like on a sailboat, other RVs and just kind of weekend warring as well. Um, I use this on a camping trip. Right now I'm still in the uh, working phase of my project here and my battery bank isn't that big. It's only two deep cycles. So I only get about a weekend charge out of those batteries and using this guy does draw a good amount of power um, with my lights and everything else. So this ended up giving me a uh, E1 warning or a uh, trouble light which means to uh, too low a voltage but that was after about 48 hours of this thing running at about two to three degrees you can check out set powers website in the link below you can also follow me at riley's island that is my youtube channel that's where i'll be posting all the build videos for this van build here as you can see it's uh almost done but not quite thank you for watching Thanks Riley for that awesome review of that fridge. There is a lot of costly mistakes that you can make when building out your van. So if you want to do your proper research, check out this playlist right here where you can watch some videos and learn so that you don't make a costly mistake.